Yo, hey everybody, in this video we're going to integrate both pandas and matplotlib. In my panda series, we've been working with the CSV file that contains the stats for the original 150 Pokemon. We'll be reusing that in this series. Or if there's another set of data that you would like to work with, feel free to use that too. I'll post this in the comments section on YouTube and you can just copy and paste it if you would like. Just be sure to put it in a CSV file. To work with pandas, we'll need to import it. Import pandas. We'll give it a nickname as PD for short. When we read a CSV file, we're going to assign it to be a data frame, which we will name DF. DF equals axis pandas as PD, call the read CSV function, and then pass in the name of that file or a file path. The name of my file is data.csv and it's right next to my main Python file. I don't need a file path beforehand. Let's be sure that it works. I'm going to print my data frame. Here are all the stats of the original 150 Pokemon. It's a truncated view though, but that's good enough. We'll create a bar chart that shows the quantity of the primary types. For example, there's grass types, there's fire types, dragon types, so on and so forth. We'll be selecting only a single column, a single series, type 1. There is a secondary type of type 2, but we won't be concerned with that in this video. To select a single column, we'll be using the subscript operator, which is a set of straight brackets. Then select the column. We will select type 1. That is the primary type. We'll be returned with a single series, a single column. There is a built-in function of series, it's called value underscore counts. And this is a function. This function will return the number in each category. So if I were to run this, we would have a total of 28 water types, 22 normal types, 14 poison types, 12 fire types, and a whole bunch more. We'll plot the quantity of each type. The index we'll put on the y-axis with a horizontal bar chart. And the values we'll place on the x-axis. Now for convenience, I'm going to assign our value counts. We'll say type underscore count equals this series. Type count will be a series. It will hold the amount of each type. Now to create a bar chart, We'll access PLT, call the bar function. We'll create a horizontal bar chart in just a moment. For the x-axis, we'll access our series of type count, but I would like just the index. We don't need the entire series. And for the y-axis, we'll need the values. Take our series of type count, access the values. Let's see what we have currently. We'll do a test run. Be sure to show your plot because I forgot to do that. There we go. Here's our bar chart, but we have a little bit of work to do. All of these index names are grouped together. Let's place them on the x-axis with a horizontal bar chart. We'll use a horizontal bar chart with bar h. That's a lot better. Now, they're in ascending order, I would like the values with the most on the top rather than the bottom. Well, when we create our type count series, we can pass in a keyword argument, ascending equals true. And they should now be in reverse order. You can change the colors if you would like, pass in a keyword argument of color, then pick a color. I'll use a hex color picker. I'll pick something blue. That's pretty decent. I'll copy the hex value and then paste it within that color keyword argument. Not bad. I'll also add an edge color of black. Edge color equals black. Let's add a title and some labels. PLT, call the title function. This title will be number of Pokemon by primary type. Let's make sure that it works. 
Yes, it does. For the x-axis, we'll say count. PLT, call the xlabel function, pass in the word of count. There we are. Then for the y-axis, axis PLT, call the y-label function, pass in a word of type. Just to make sure everything fits, we're going to call the tight layout function so that everything fits. PLT, call the tight layout function. And now everything should fit within our figure. All right, everybody, so that served as a final project for us. That's how to use both pandas and matplotlib together.